Hello everyone, welcome to the Royce Sports. I'm your host Royce, and on this channel we discuss Xbox related topics, but I do dabble in the gaming related news. And today we're discussing Bill Spencer in his recent interview with Bloomberg, where he told them that after the Activision Blizzard deal is done, that they still are potentially going to be acquiring more studios in different markets. Let's talk about it. Bill Spencer was recently interviewed by Bloomberg where they asked him questions like how he feels as head of Xbox handling a $70 billion deal as well as once this deal is done and all the dust is settled what his plans are and what they want to focus on as the Xbox brand in other markets and this is what they had to say in that interview. While Microsoft is focused on completing the Activision acquisition, Spencer said he remains on the hunt for more content whether by investing in new games, partnerships, or further deals. Xbox wants to add content and creators in the region of the globe where it's less strong. Quote, I'm always thinking about things that added to our capability, he said. Even though we've worked on our geographic expansion, I'd still say we have too many of our creators in places that are traditional markets. End quotes. So, by him saying this and stating that, he's pretty much saying that yeah, they've expanded, but they've expanded in the areas that they are already present in and that they are, are wanting to expand in a different market and in different geographical areas that they are not in. This is including places like France and Japan. Japan being a huge market for gaming, they still haven't been able to get a foothold there. And maybe with this constant generation, that might be different. And this is where I want to lead into the conversation of acquiring studios which is what you can kind of guess is what he's saying he's not flat out saying that we are acquiring more studios but it's heavily implied there you go 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 in fact months after the activision blizzard deal got announced Back in April of 2022, Microsoft ended up posting a job on LinkedIn. As the Xbox job listing suggests, Microsoft isn't done with acquisitions. This was posted on April 25th, 2022, three months after the Activision Blizzard deal. A new job listing at Microsoft for a gaming strategy and development manager on LinkedIn, followed by Video Games Chronicle, suggests the company isn't done with gaming acquisitions. The gaming strategy and development team serves as a corporate strategy function for Team Xbox, reads the job description. We partner closely with the gaming leadership team to identify and evaluate transformative growth opportunities. Our charter includes helping to answer Microsoft Gaming's most challenging business questions, leading games mergers and acquisitions program, if for example, Activision Blizzard, Zenimax, Double Fine, etc., and identifying and understanding key industry dynamics. Our collaborations with the gaming leadership team help set the directions for the business, both with Microsoft Gaming and with Microsoft CEO, senior leadership team, and board of directors. So what this statement is saying is pretty much that they are obviously still wanting to expand. So what studios are they gonna acquire? Are they gonna acquire some random studios like they did with Activision Blizzard? Or are they gonna acquire more organically as some people like to say, by having studios they've worked with in the past. Well, if that's the case, there is a short list of developers that they've worked with that they could potentially be warming up to to make a partnership with and acquire. One of the studios Microsoft has been working closely with is Asobo Studios. Asobo Studios is mostly known for their work on Microsoft Flight Simulator as well as A Plague Tale Innocence. And their new game of Plague Tale Requiem is coming to Game Pass day and date on October 18th, 2022. So there's obviously a close relationship going on between Asobo and Microsoft, and this dates back to even before their work on Microsoft Flight Simulator, before they were really known as what they are now today. There are mostly support studios that worked on games like ReCore, Disneyland Adventures, Zoo Tycoon, 
even going further back and making games like Wally and Ratatouille, as well as Toy Story 3. So they were kind of a jack of all trades for a little bit, just supporting, and then they kind of grew into themselves and found their rhythm. And one of the things about A Plague Tale Innocence is the fact that this game is a lot like The Last of Us. It is a short narrative story that it takes in consideration a stealth mechanic and does something different with the rats that you're able to control in the game. It's a very unique and fun game. By Microsoft acquiring this studio, this would be a good get for them because they would have a studio that has that third person narrative that can rival something like The Last of Us. Now I'm comparing A Plague Tale Innocence with The Last of Us and obviously The Last of Us is in a whole nother caliber and, and is a game that is a genre defining game. But with A Plague Tale Innocence, you could see the, the beginnings of something great. And if they had the right nurture and the right amount of investment, they'd be able to become a really great studio. Next up on the list of potential acquisitions is the Hitman studio, Iowa Interactive. Iowa Interactive is mostly known for their Hitman trilogy that they recently just came to an end. But they've also dabbled in other projects like Kanan Lynch and Mini Ninjas. Now, these other games were not really perceived very well, but Hitman, on the other hand, has been considered one of the best games of the last generation. Not only that, but they have two projects in work at the moment. One of them being Project 007, which is a 007 game, go figure. And the other being Project Dragon, which is a AAA narrative fantasy MMO RPG that is being produced exclusively for Microsoft. So with this partnership, a lot of people are thinking that maybe Microsoft is testing the waters with them to see if how they produce and how well they work. And if they like what they see, will potentially grab them and put them inside the Xbox family. Another company that they might potentially be acquiring is Avalanche Game Studios. They are best known for their work on Just Cause, Rage 2, and the Mad Max game. Now, they are also working on an exclusive capacity with Xbox when it comes down to the game Contraband that they revealed last E3, which didn't have any gameplay yet. Now, a lot of people think, okay, well, maybe this is another way for them to test their, their capabilities as a studio and to see what their work culture is like and how well they work with Xbox. This is in, this is in par with what they did, what they're supposedly doing with IO Interactive. Now, something that a lot of people don't realize is that Avalanche Group is already owned by another company, Nordisk Film. So in order for Microsoft to acquire them, they're going to have to pull them from that studio. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I'm just kind of thinking that it's not really likely that they're just using them because they are an open studio that has no projects currently lined up, so might as well use them. Another studio that people think could be testing the waters just like the previous ones is Certain Affinity. Certain Affinity has been with Xbox since as early as Halo 2. They're a support studio that has been dedicated to working on first-person shooters like Halo and Call of Duty has been a mainstay with these two franchises for a while. They've worked on games like Call of Duty World at War, Left 4 Dead, Call of Duty Black Ops, Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 4, Call of Duty Ghost, Halo The Master Chief Collection, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, and Halo Infinite. Now there's also rumors that they are getting their own project within Halo Infinite called Project Tatanka, which is going to be a battle royale set in Halo Infinite. They also are rumored to have their own game that is being produced by Xbox that's supposed to be a clone to Monster Hunter World. So there's a lot going on here with this company. They've been around for a really long time and they're a great support studio. So people are assuming that, hey, now is probably a good time to pick them up, especially since Microsoft is trusting them enough to give them their own game. Now we're gonna be talking about Platinum Games. Platinum Games and Xbox have had a kind of a rocky relationship over the past decade. And that's mostly due to the fact that Scalebound, which is a pretty hyped game when it first got revealed, ended up getting canceled and there was some kind of weird stuff going on between Microsoft and Platinum Games about it. In a recent interview, Platinum Games has talked about how they still want to work on Scalebound. 
And this is what they had to say about it. Platinum Games wants to return to Scalebound, the dragon-filled Xbox exclusive it canceled in 2017, and has appealed to Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer to begin those discussions. Speaking to IGN Japan, Platinum President Atushi Inaba explained that Scalebound creator Hideki Kamiya has been talking about wanting to work on Scalebound again for a while. Kamiya himself added, I'd like to appeal to Phil Spencer directly. Let's do it, Phil. And then they continued to go on and say, Kamiya has not been shy about expressing his regret over the com over the game's cancellation, and the developer has said before that it would love to return to the game with Microsoft's permission. However, Inaba made clear that this isn't an ideal wish and they'd like to reopen talks with Microsoft about the idea. Often in an interview, you might hear a developer politely saying, yes, if we had the opportunity, we'd love to work on that again, but we don't mean it that way. Both Kamiya and I are serious. We would really love to work on Scalebound again and like to discuss it with Microsoft properly. Kamiya went further. Development had progressed a fair way and it seems pointless for Microsoft to just hold on to that and not do anything with it. Kamiya then switched to English to say, Phil, Phil, let's do it together. So with that, they obviously want to continue working with Xbox despite the rocky relationship that they had because they believe in that product and they want to continue with it and continue trying to improve it and learn from it. In another recent interview with the developer, they talked about the recent acquisitions and what their thoughts on it are. This is what they had to say. Following his promotion to the position of president and CEO earlier this month, BGC asked Atushi Inaba if Platinum Games would be open to offers of being brought under the umbrella of another developer, particularly in light of such recent big name acquisitions as Activision Blizzard, 68.7 billion purchase of Microsoft, and PlayStation's 3.6 billion procurement of Bungie. The most important thing for us is to have the freedom to make the games that we want to make, Inaba replied. But I hear about the recent acquisitions. I don't think Microsoft is going to start micromanaging Activision or where they take away all their freedom. I don't think it's going to be a relationship like that. Inaba was also asked for his thoughts on why Japanese companies don't engage in such mergers and buyouts as often as their Western counterparts, especially with the gaming industry currently projected to see $150 billion in deals completed throughout 2022. Inaba asserted, I agree, you don't see that a lot in Japan, and personally, I think it's weird. For some of these big companies with all their money, you sometimes think, come on, buy some companies up already, he said. It does feel strange to see Japanese companies being passive all of the time. However, according to Dr. Serkan Toto, CEO of games industry consultancy agency Katan Games, while nothing can be ruled out in this day and age, the acquisition of Platinum Games by a Western company such as Microsoft is highly unlikely based on precedent. In some ways, Microsoft taking over a big Japanese publisher would be bigger news than the Activision deal, he previously told VGC. So far, no foreign company has been able to acquire a Japanese studio, and I can guarantee you there have been attempts from both Western and Asian players. So basically, what they're saying is that Platinum Games themselves do want to be acquired and are not against the idea of that. And other people are still also talking about how difficult it is to acquire studios in that in that market by buying platinum games you do have a footing in japan now and on top of that they do have really good games and they also have some really bad games and the reason why they have these bad games is because they're trying to stay afloat and they're taking random games that they can get from anybody so if you look at their portfolio you'll see games like mad world bayonetta Vanquish, Anarchy Reigns, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Bayonetta 2, The Legend of Korra, Transformers Devastation, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Mutants in Manhattan, Near Automata, Astral Chain, and their most recent flop being Babylon's Fall. As you can see, they have franchises that are considered some of the best franchises in gaming, with Near Automata and Bayonetta being really highly regarded. But then you have other games that they produce, like The Legend of Korra, Transformers, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tie-ins that are kind of not very good and perceived pretty poorly. And with their latest attempt of Babylon's Fall being a disastrous launch with only having 2,000 active players on the release date, you can kind of tell that they need some financial support, which is probably why they're reaching out to Xbox so hard. Another potential 
studio buyout could be Warner Brothers Interactive. They have studios that have worked on the Batman series, the Shadow of series, which is the Middle Earth series. They also have Telltale with the Lego games. And they also have probably their biggest studio, Netherrealm, which is known for Mortal Kombat. By having Xbox acquire the studio, you could potentially shore up a lot of your kind of areas that you're weak in. And right now, Xbox seems to be weak in family friendly content, fighting games, and third person action adventure. And by acquiring Warner Brothers Studios, you would be able to have all of those specific needs in one place. But that's the thing. The issue going on with the merger between HBO and Discovery has kind of put everything to a halt. The way that it, everything is being shaken up over there, they don't really know what's going on. And in the most recent interview, they talked about how the gaming industry and the gaming division that they currently have is surprisingly beneficial and surprisingly making them money. So they're just going to leave it as it is. But they did try to sell the gaming division two years ago for $4 billion. And Microsoft and Sony had their names in the hat. But they felt that maybe now was not the right time to be selling, so they pulled out from it. And along with all those studios, you might not be able to acquire the, the rights to those characters. So Lord of the Rings, which is now owned by Embracer, won't come with it. You won't get all of the Lego franchise and you potentially won't be able to get any of the Batman or DC stuff. And if they try to sell Netherrealm without what makes Netherrealm Mortal Kombat, you're kind of taking some really talented people, but they don't have anything to do other than create new IP, which is a great thing, but that takes time. And they don't want to invest in studios that's gonna take time to grow. They just wanna be able to get it and just keep on going. So Warner Brothers might be off the table, but it would definitely help Xbox in a huge way if they're able to acquire them. And now we're gonna talk about the acquisitions that are sort of the pie in the sky acquisitions, the ones that you think that would never happen in a million years. Sort of like what happened with Bethesda and with Activision Blizzard. Never did I think that I was gonna wake up one morning and see that these companies were being acquired and they were being acquired by Microsoft. Now, these companies are that same type of vibe, the ones that give you off that, the ones that give off that this will never happen, there's no point in even having them in the discussion. So with that, I'll give you the list of the potential acquisitions that I would think would be those. Ubisoft, Capcom, Toei Tecmo, Bandai Namco, Square Enix, Take-Two Interactive, EA, some of these you might be able to cross off the list because of the fact that they've recently stated that they have no intentions of being acquired like EA. EA has said that they are in fact in a growth state right now and that they don't have any intentions of being acquired. Even though there was recent rumors of EA being acquired by Amazon, those were turned out those turned out to be false. Another company that could be crossed off that list is probably Ubisoft. Ubisoft has stated that they do want to sell if the price is right but they just finished fighting off an aggressive takeover so i'm not sure how they would want to sell or why they'd want to sell after they just finished having that ubisoft does have a lot of ip that would be beneficial towards the xbox ecosystem like rayman and and assassin's creed and so the splinter cell and tom clancy games but with how their releases are with ubisoft they all have that ubisoft stink to, to them they all play the same they all feel the same far cry feels like assassin's creed assassin's creed feels like prince of persia rayman is is all doing its own thing and hasn't come back for many many years there hasn't been a splinter cell game in however long despite how many people want there to be there's a lot of issues going on at ubisoft that i don't really know microsoft would want to take over and not only that, but Ubisoft has around 20,000 employees. 20,000 employees. That is way too many employees for the turnout rate of your video games. You have to pay all those people all the time. And if you're not releasing enough games, it's kind of pointless. Another one is Square Enix. Square Enix has been 
kind of doing some really weird stuff as of late. They sold off their Western studios, so they sold off Crystal Dynamics and Idols Montreal to Embracer for $300 billion. So it seems like they're trying to compress themselves and focus mostly on their Japanese studios. Now, uh, another reason this could be is also because they are potentially gearing themselves up to be sold or acquired by somebody else. Now, Square Enix and Microsoft don't really have a relationship. In fact, the relationship would mostly be between Sony and Square Enix. Sony has had exclusives from Square Enix, like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy VII 16. So Microsoft is probably not gonna be able to acquire this. And not only that, but Sony has a home field advantage because of the fact that they are a Japanese studio. So it might be difficult for, for Microsoft to be able to get in there and, and acquire that studio. Take Two, Take Two has also expressed that they don't believe in a Game Pass like subscription model. They feel like the classic way of selling games is what makes money and that's what they want to stick with. And they are going to continue to do that. And so by that, they kind of are saying like Microsoft, we don't believe in the Game Pass subscription model and we don't believe in what you guys have to sell to us so despite them having a good relationship with each other i doubt they'd acquire take two and not only that take two takes a really long time to produce their games rockstar has only been focusing on grand theft auto and red dead for years now and before they used to be able to release on a really good cadence and now they're kind of falling back and release a game once every five or seven years and all the other studios they're pretty good but they're not what microsoft needs to fill in those gaps that they're missing so with that i think the pie in the sky acquisition for me the one that i would think it would be a huge get would be capcom capcom is a really strong studio they're going bankrupt in the early and to mid 2010s, but they're able to come back from that due to their Resident Evil franchise and the fact that they started doing all those really great remakes and they started producing their games to become a higher quality. And some of the IPs that they own are Ace Attorney, Bionic Commando, Dead Rising, Devil May Cry, Dino Crisis, Dragon's Dogma, Final Fight, Ghosts and Goblins, Lost Planet, Marvel vs. Capcom, Mega Man, Monster Hunter, Okami, Power Stone, Resident Evil, Steel Battalion, Street Fighter, Strider, and Beautiful Joe. Now a lot of those games that I listed are some of the best games that have ever graced consoles and I am still waiting and dying to see a Dino Crisis remake in the vein of what Resident Evil 2 did with their remake. And I think that having the Microsoft backing, you'd be able to do those things and also experiment more. So it'd be very interesting to see if that would be able to be a possibility. Now, I highly doubt all this would ever happen. It seems that maybe the studio acquisitions are kind of slowing down and are done and aren't going to be focused on going into the future and might be just one of these tiny studios, not these big publishers. So with all of that, I'd like to say this, I feel like this is the most important thing to the video, is the fact that I don't actually believe that acquiring studios is necessary and I don't think it's actually good for the gaming industry to have so much consolidation going on right now. What they should be doing is investing, investing in their own studios, investing in creating from the ground up and giving these people a new breath and expanding and creating new IP. Right now, everyone's focused on expansion, expansion at an extremely fast rate because of the amount of inflation that is going on. The money that you have in the bank is no longer worth anything. And in fact, it's losing value the longer you have it there. So you might as well be spending it, which is what is going on. Does that make it okay? No. Do I want all this stuff to happen? No, I want them to be able to produce something and create new IP. That's what I want. I don't want consolidation. But that's not the name of the game. Right now, what is going on is consolidation. And if 
someone had to acquire these studios, I'd rather it be Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo than it be someone like Tencent or Amazon or Google who don't know what they're doing or will cause restrictions in the games that you play. And with that, if you like what you saw here and you'd like to see more, then please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you thought that I might have missed any big name studios or publishers, put down in the comment what you think Microsoft should acquire next. Thanks, and I'll be seeing you next time.